Hello everyone, I'm Alicia. For this video, I'm going to be doing a remake of a video that I filmed several years ago when I first started doing YouTube videos. The video is called Elegant Beaded Earrings, and back when I filmed that, I was really new to doing YouTube videos, and I w didn't fully understand my camera, and I kind of did a crummy job on that video. But anyways, I've had a lot of requests to refilm the Elegant Beaded Earrings tutorial, so here I am today refilming it for you guys, and I thought now would be a really good time to refilm this video because it's, well at the time I'm filming, it is the holiday season and Christmas is going to be next month. So I figured that this is a great gift to give away to anybody because these earrings, I love these earrings to death. They are one of my most favorite earrings that I've made to date. They are so small. They are just the tiniest little beaded earrings that I've ever seen. And I just love that because they're so wearable. And I've actually fallen asleep with this earring on a, the pair that I made uh, several years ago. And woke up and I didn't even realize that I wore them all night long. And they didn't even bother me because they are so small. So I'm just going to get a ruler and show you how small they are. They are so small. Look at that. They are so tiny. And of course this one here that has a teardrop on it is just a little bit longer because of that. But anyways, something else that is really great about these earrings is that they can be very inexpensive to make. Now this pair here and this pair I used all Swarovski crystals. I used a clear AB and a double AB. I think it was a turquoise and this here was also clear AB and I used this really purple color. I forgot what it was called in the Swarovski. But anyways these here were a little bit more expensive materials that I used. The seed beads were very expensive. I used this really cool marbleized seed bead. It's made by Toho. I'll show you a close up there, focus camera. There you go, they're really neat looking seed beads. And these here are also marbleized, but it's a blue and purple color. I don't know how well you could see that in my camera, but they are really awesome seed beads. Anyways, these ones here, I used Eidos, Eidos seed beads instead of three millimeter bicones, and I used four millimeter pearls instead of the four millimeter bicones and on the points here instead of using the 80C beads I use three by four millimeter rondelles so these weren't as expensive to make compared to the ones that I used to in. and this one over here instead of doing the three millimeter bicones or 80C beads like in those I did three millimeter check fire polish beads and I also did some glass pearls. They are also 4 millimeter. So you can really get some different looks here. And these earrings are so fast to make because they are so small. And once you get the hang of it, you can pop a lot of these out. And they're just great to give away as gifts. And also something else I want to let you guys know. If you know anybody that has metal allergies, a great earring finding to use is um, stainless steel earring findings. These here are stainless steel stainless steel lever backs and they are really good quality. I bought them on Amazon. I don't remember if it was a 50 it was either a 50 or a 100 pack of them. But anyways, I'll try to remember to put a link for them down there in the description bar in case you want to check them out. But um if you don't see it, that's probably because I forgot to put it down there. So just remind me in the comments and I'll post it. This color here is looking so strange on my camera on the bead mat. It looks better when I pick it up, but the camera is not doing this one here justice. Anyways, for this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make these earrings. They are so cute. And um, back when I did my original video, I probably had like 40 subscribers, and now I have 140,000 subscribers. So I'm sure that a lot of you don't even remember this tutorial, okay? So let's get started. Here is the list of materials you will need to make a pair of earrings. You will need to cut two two foot pieces of 8 pound or 10 pound monofilament. I'm using 10 pound and again you'll need two two foot pieces. You're also going to need two earring findings. I'm using stainless steel lever backs. You're going to need eight four millimeter beads and as you could see you can use all different shapes you can use rounds you can use bicones check fire polished you can also do three by four millimeter rondelles you're also going to need 
24 3 millimeter beads and again you can use bicones, rounds, check fire polished and the cheapest way is 80 seed beads so you'll need 24 of those. You're also going to need 11 of seed beads in one to two colors. This one here I just did one color because I really wanted to show off that seed bead but I've also found that using two different colors of seed beads, you'll get more of a detailed looking earring. Now, some other things that you'll need, and these are optional, is teardrops. At the bottom here, instead of doing a three millimeter bead, you could just put a cute little teardrop at the bottom to make it look even more interesting. And um, I like to get my teardrops from Lima beads because they always have a huge selection of color to choose from, and they always have a sale going on. Something else I use when I use monofilament is tweezers because if I get in a spot where I can't pass through I can just use my tweezers to get through there and I do want to let you guys know if you're not crazy about using monofilament I think you can use a uh, fire line for this project now remember I always put the material list down there in the description bar so you can see everything you need and I also put other stuff down there so make sure you check that out Okay, so I'm going to be making this earring here in the video, and what I do is I start out making the center here, I make one whole side, and then I flip it over and I make the other side, this is double sided, and then I do the edge, and then I make the bail here for the top, and I add my earring finding. Okay, so I'm going to start, and by the way, I went ahead and I colored the ends of my two foot piece of monofilament with permanent markers. This one's red and this one's black and normally the red wears off before the black. So I'm going to start by picking up four C beads for the center of my earring and I'm using two different colors and I have this really neat, uh, I forgot what this color is called, it's like a rainbow bronze. It's made by uh, Preciosa has different colors of bronze and this is like green and pink and stuff and it's a really neat looking seed bead but I'm gonna go ahead and pick up four of them I'm gonna slide this down a bit and I'm going to crisscross my other string through the fourth seed bead like that then I'm going to put my ends together make sure they are even like that I'm gonna put my finger in this little hole here grab this seed bead that I cross through and pull it down to the very center of my string. So now I have this, okay? So now what I'm going to do is pick up my three millimeter bead and again you can be using different shapes. You can use the fire polish like I'm using, you can use a bicone, you can use a round, you can use uh, 80 seed beads. So um, yeah, you can use so many different shapes. But anyways, I'm using Czech Fire Polished. I'm going to go ahead and pick one of these up and it doesn't matter what color uh, I'm using. I'm doing the red one so if you colored your monofilament go ahead and pick yours up with the red. Then I'm going to pick up my seed bead and I did a white seed bead here on the edge here of this earring. And then I'm going to pick up my four millimeter round bead and then again my seed bead and I have a white there and then I'm going to slide that down then I'm going to pick up another three millimeter bead and I'm going to cross both of my ends through this bead and bring this down okay and then I have what looks like this okay so you could see that I have this string right here that's going towards the center of my earring so that means that I need to take the string that's doing that and it's red and I'm going to pass it through this seed bead right here okay so I'm gonna hold, go ahead and hold my other string and pull this through just like that that's what I have now so now I'm going to take the string that's on the outside because the one that's on the outside is the one I pick my beads up with this one right here and I'm going to pick up an 11 OC bead, my 4 millimeter bead, an 11 O again, slide those three beads down. I'm going to pick up my 3 millimeter or 8 O and crisscross through it, both of my ends, just like that, and bring that down. Okay, looking up close, this is what I have. And again, you could see that I have this string up here 
that's going in the direction towards the center of my earring. And that means that this string has to pass through this seed bead. So I'm going to take that, and the color of this one is black, and I'm going to pass through this seed bead, just like that, and pull it through, just like that, and pull that snug. Now with the outside string, this one here, I'm going to pick up some more beads. I'm going to pick up 111, a 4 millimeter, an 11, just like that, slide those down, and then I'm picking up my cross through bead, which is the 3 millimeter. So now I'm going to cross both of my ends through this bead, just like that, and bring it down. So now I have this. So now I have to reposition this string here that's in the center of my earring. And I'm not just going to go through a seed bead, I'm also going to go through this bead here. So the one here that's in the center, that's pointing towards the center, is the red one. And I'm going to take my end of my string and I'm going to pass through this seed bead here. And I'm also going to pass through this bead because we have to be in position to pick up more beads, okay? So passing through here, pull that through. Now I'm going to pull both strings and I have this, okay? So now I'm going to work with both and pick up beads on both ends. So I have 111 on each end, slide that down. Then I'm going to pick up my cross through bead, which is this pearl, 4 millimeter pearl, and I'm going to cross through that, okay? Just like that, and bring that down. Bring the bead down. I now have one side complete, and I don't know if you guys remember or not, but I also have matching earring, or rings, that go along with this earring. And to do, to do the ring, Instead of going and doing the other side to make this doubled, I would just go ahead right now and add my seed beads here in between the four millimeter beads and then I would attach my ring band. If you didn't see my ring video, I'll put a link down there in the description bar and again, if you don't see the link down there, it's probably because I forgot. So just let me know and I'll post a link down there for the ring video. Okay? So now that I have one side complete, I have to make the other side. So I have no more 4 millimeter beads to work with. I'm only working with the 3 millimeter and the 11 O seed beads. So I'm going to pick up two 11 O's, one 11 O on each string, and then I'm going to pick up a 3 millimeter, one on each string. So again, I'm picking up two. So one 11 on this, and one 3 millimeter, one 11 on this, one 3 millimeter and slide those down. Now I'm going to pick up my center color of my earring, which is this rainbow bronze looking color. And I just need to pick one of those 11 O's up, slide that down, and crisscross both of my strings through that bead and bring this down. Now see how this here is flipping back? It will stay like this um, you know, once I get going, but to stop it from doing that, what I just do is I loosen this up, I pass this through here, and then I pull this tight, and now it's staying on that side. Okay, can you see that? Okay, so now I'm going to continue this side here, and I have to complete the center there. So I'm going to pick up on one string, doesn't matter which, I'll do it with the red. Three... 11 O's, and I'm going to cross through the third one. Crush cross my both of my strings to the third one, so I have a total of four. Okay, so bringing this down, I now have this. Okay, so I have this string that's going in this direction, which is leading to nowhere. And I have this string here that is going in this direction, and it's telling me that I need to pass through this 3 millimeter bead. So I'm going to take this bead and pop it out a little bit, 
so I can pass through it. Okay, so I'm just going to pass through it like that and pull this through. And now I have this. So now I'm just going to lay this over and I have to take this string here and I have to pick up another white 11 of seed bead and it's going to sit right here. There's going to be a cluster of four seed beads right here in these uh, spaces in between the four millimeter. Okay, so I'm going to pick up an 11 o right here on this string that's exiting out of the three millimeter and I'm going to pass through this four millimeter. Okay, pull that through and now you can see that I have a cluster of four seed beads right there. So now I'm going to go back to this string that I just picked the bead up with and pass through here and I'm going to pick up one 11 o seed bead again in this white color and then I'm going to pick up my three millimeter bead and I'm going to crisscross both ends through it like that and bring this down. Okay, so now you could see that I have this. So you could see that this string is going in this direction and that's telling me that I need to pass through that 11 C bead right there. So I'm going to take this string, exiting out of the top of this bead, I'm going to pass through this C bead. I'm going to grab the other string and pull this through. So now you could see that I have this. Okay, so now this one again is leading to nowhere. So I have to take this one, which is coming down this direction, and I have to pick up another seed bead. I need, again, four there. So I have four here, I need four here again. So I'm going to pick up one 11 or seed bead, and I'm going to pass through this bead here. And sometimes you'll have to take your fingernail and pop that bead out, because it could be a little tricky to pass through if you have it pulled very tight. So I'm putting my fourth in right there, pulling that snug, and now you can see that I have four there and four here, okay? So now I have to pick up with this string my beads. So I'm going to pick up an 11 o seed bead with the string that's exiting out of the four millimeter, one 11 o and one three millimeter bead. Now I'm going to take my other string and crisscross both ends through that bead and bring that down. So when I pull it tight, and I do need to pull it very tight because I haven't been doing that, I have this. So again you can see my four, four, cluster of four there. Again I need four C beads here, but before I do that I'm gonna go back to this string up here. So right now I have four three millimeter beads up here in the top, so that means I need to reposition this one, okay, the one on the top. And if you look over here, I have four again. So I'm not going to be picking up any beads with this string until I reposition it. So I'm going to take this string here that's on the top. I'm going to pass through this 11 OC bead. And I'm also going to pass through the four millimeter bead right there beside it. So through here. Okay. And also through the four millimeter. Through there. And through there. Just like that. Okay. Pull this through. Now both of my strings are exiting out of these three millimeter beads. So what I'm going to do now is pick up on each string one 11 OC bead on each string. Slide that down. Hold the one string in your one hand so your bead don't fall off. And Right here I have this string exiting out of this 3 millimeter bead. I'm just going to take it and pass through my 4 millimeter pearl, just like that. And now I have a cluster of 4. And this side over here, I'm going to take my other string 
and pass again through this pearl, but I'm going in the opposite direction. Make sure you don't lose your seed bead. Okay, pull that through. Now before I continue, I'm just going to check and make sure that all of my work is right. So I have four seed beads up here on the top. That's a different color. I have my four three millimeter rounds. Flipping it over, I have the same. Four 11 O's in the center, and then my four three millimeter rounds. And then going around and looking at the edges, I have clusters of four 11 O seed beads in between all of my four millimeter beads, okay? So what I do before I add the edge is I like to squish this between my fingers and get these beads in the correct spot because sometimes they don't want to sit right so I found that it's important to flatten this. Okay, so I'm going to take my strings and put them together and you'll notice that one is longer and mine is the black one so I'll take that and I'm going to pick up with the black one to fill in the gaps in between my four millimeter beads, I'm going to pick up an 11 OC bead, a three millimeter bead, and an 11 O. Just like this. Slide that down, and I'm going to pass through. I'm exiting out here. I'm going to skip over all of these four 11 O's, and I'm going to pass through this bead. Pull that through, and you should now have that. Okay. Again, do the same thing, picking up an 11 O. Picking up my 3 millimeter and a 11 out. Slide that down. I'm exiting out here, skipping over all of these. I'm going to pass through this 4 millimeter. Okay? So exiting out there, skipping over those, passing through here. And pull that tight. Now I'm going to go to this string over here. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention, if you're doing the teardrop, the first bead you would have put on, the first 3 millimeter bead, would actually be your teardrop. So right here, instead of having a 3 millimeter, you would have had your teardrop, and then put on your 3 millimeter, and then go to the opposite string, because we're trying to keep the goal whenever I do two needle weave, with monofilament is I try to keep both of my ends close in the same length because if one gets too short then I, I'm gonna have problems later on. So I'm gonna go to this string here, this one's red. Wait, I actually need to make sure. Actually, the black one. I'll go to the black one. Because that one's longer still. Okay? And I'm going to pick up again an 11 -0 three millimeter and an 11 o exiting out of this four millimeter skipping over all of those seed beads I'm going to pass through this four millimeter pearl just like that I have one two three sides done I have to do the top again I like to squish this because you can see that those little seed beads move all around just to make sure that they're sitting in the right spot. Now I'm going to pick up an 11 O seed bead on each end of my string here. Slide that down. Pick up my last four, uh, three millimeter bead and crisscross both of my strings through it like this. And bring that down. Pull it tight. Squish it. Make sure that it looks good. Okay. It's very pretty. I love these orange pearls. They are so pretty. Now I have to make the bail right here for my earring finding. Now if you're using like a fish hook ear wire, you don't have to pick this up because those open up and these do open up, but I don't like opening them up. Why open them if you don't have to, right? So I'm going to pick it up right now. So I'm going to pick up one, two, three seed beads. I'm going to pick up my earring finding and my last three seed beads. So I'm picking up a total of six in my bale here. 
going to take my other string and crisscross my other string through all of these beads and through the earring finding. Okay, find the ends and pull those, pull this down. And before I pull this down too much, I do want to pull this one last time to make sure it's tight because I don't need that to be loose when I pull this down. Now what I'm going to do is take one of my strings and I need to pass through this just this one seed bead right here. And you may need to use your fingernails. Be careful that you don't go under the monofilament that's already there. Because if you do, if you twist and wrap around that, then your bail won't lay flat. And when you go to wear your earring, your bail will be like this. It won't be straight. So I hope that made sense to you. Okay, so I'm just going to pull this through. I made it through. It does not look like I'm twisted around it. Okay, just like that. I'm going to take my other string. And I'm going to pass through the seed bead on this side. Again, you want to make sure that you're not wrapped under the already existing monofilament string there. So pull it down like this. Okay, and pull it tight. And there we go. This is the back of the earring, obviously, because of how it opens. And that's the front. So now we are ready to tie half hitch knots. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to tie a half hitch knot. And before I tie the knot, I make sure that I pull this tight so it doesn't loosen up as I'm trying to tie a knot. Okay, so now I'm going to do is I have my black string here. It doesn't matter which one you do it with, but it's easier to see the black. I'm going to pull this string, and what it's going to do is it's going to lift the bead up, and you can see a little hole right there when I do that. And then you want to pass your string through the hole. Oops. And what you're doing is you're catching the monofilament that's already there. And you're tying a knot onto that monofilament. Okay? So I just went through there. Make sure you don't pass through any of those seed beads. And I, I'm pulling this too much. Okay, so I made a loop, and I'm going to pass through the loop one or two times. Two times is always more secure. Okay, just like that. I'm making sure that my knot is going to fall right there in front of that pearl. Because I'm not going to be able to pass this knot into a seed bead, okay? So before you pull the knot down, stick your finger in this loop, pull it snug, so that it doesn't loosen up right here. Um, earlier, when I made some of those... I did have an issue with it loosening up when I tied my knot, and then you could see some of my monofilament at the top. So go ahead, stick your finger in a loop, make sure that's tight, and then pull the knot down right in front of the 4 millimeter bead. Okay? And now what I have to do is to hide the knot in front of the 4 millimeter bead. Now, if you're using another bead, like a round bead, or even a bicone has a small hole, you might not be able to hide that knot, but it's no big deal. You can't really see it because it's clear. Okay, so now what I have to do is pass this string through my four millimeter bead and hide the knot. And I might have to flip over and do it on this side. I think my knot's blocking me. Okay. Now it would be nice if I can come out of that 11 of CB that's right next to it. But that can be a little tricky. I'm going to need my tweezers for this. I'm just going to push this through. And I'm using a glass pearl, so the coating, I believe, is preventing me from passing through. 
sometimes if you spin the bead you can pass through it okay and that worked I spun it and it's right here okay so I'm just gonna pull this through just like that and I'm going to try and hide my knot in there okay and it went in so it's hidden so now what I'm gonna do is to take my string and I tried doing it earlier but I couldn't and pass through this 11 of seed beads it's right here next through next to the uh, three millimeter bead And again, I'll just use these tweezers to make it easier on me. Okay. And what I like to do is I like to tie another half hitch knot right here. Then I pass through the three millimeter through this here. I tie one more knot right here. I pass through this bead, the seed bead, and this one, and I trim my thread or string. Then I flip it over and I do the same exact thing over here. I tie a knot before this bead pass through these two here, tie a knot before here, pass the knot to here, pass through this seed bead, tie a knot here, then pass through these beads here and exit out this one. So both of my strings will be exiting out this and I just trim them. Okay, so that is how you tie half hitch knots. And remember, like I said, if you're using pearls and you know there's a coating on the glass pearls, if you can't pass through it, just spin the bead if you can because the, sometimes the coating is blocking the hole and you can't pass through it and uh, you should be able to get through and tweezers do make it a lot easier and um, I did find to make sure that this is even up here and that you don't see the monofilament it, it is sometimes best to after you tie your knot in front of the four millimeter bead to go over here and tie a knot here so that it stays even on both sides. I hope that makes sense to you. So go ahead and finish tying your knots and you're done. This is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video, leave me a comment, subscribe if you want to see more of my videos, and like me on Facebook. And don't forget to share pictures of the jewelry you've made from my videos on my Facebook page and follow me on Pinterest. Thanks for watching.